Hello, friends, and welcome to a new series on Seven Days to Die. Um, due to some comments I've gotten from people, I think I'm gonna, what I'm going to do here is a kind of to, a very starter level tutorial series. All very short videos, and each one will cover a specific uh, part of Seven Days to Die survival. So in this first segment, we're going to show you how to create a new game and kind of what the different settings mean. So basically, in your game modes, You've got choices of survival single player, survival multiplayer, and creative. Survival single player, straightforward. It's a game on your computer that no one else has access to. Survival multiplayer is a game on your computer that your friends could join in. Um, you can basically join into a Steam friends game uh, just by clicking on their Steam profile and clicking join game when they're in the game session. Or you could give them your public IP address and all that stuff. You will need to make sure that your your router is set up um, so that uh, you know your computer is the DMZ, or you, you've got whatever you know whatever you need to do to get your machine to be the public server on your uh, home network. And creative is simply a creative game. There are uh, uh, no no survival aspects to it. You can basically just build blocks. You can build them at great range. Um, so if you just want to play with the game and just build really cool structures, creative is your one you want to go with. So we're going to go ahead and set up a survival single player type game. Now under game world, you've got two options. You've got Navis game and random gen. Navis game is the kind of stock map that the game started with. And it's grown a little bit over time. And later on when the story mode uh, for the game is rolled out, it will be set in Navis game. So basically they have a, stock world with known locales and uh, that way the story can can grow on that you know stock map so it does have all of the aspects of the random gen world uh, as far as the different biome types and there are a biome basically is a collection of uh environmental effects plant life and um uh, sky and ground covers basically so you've got uh, a desert biome, you've got a forest biome, you've got a maple, you have a pine forest and maple forest biomes. You've got a snow biome, and you've got a wasteland biome, and you've got a burn biome and a plains biome. So those are kind of the bi different, you know, different areas. And Navigate has all of those areas. Um, the one thing they don't have is the really nice, cool um, terrain that the random gen system works out. Now keep in mind that these are these, all these videos will be for version 10.4, all pretty much all of the alpha 10 uh, fork, and I will update these with alpha 11, uh, which will be coming out at the end of February 2015. So random gen allows you to create a world that is um, seeded completely from uh, the ground up um, with uh, randomly generated terrain and. Uh, objects in the world. There is always a central city at the zero zero coordinates, uh, but around that from that point on, it's all completely randomly generated, and it all comes off of the game name that you set here. So if you wanted to create a random world, you would give it a name like Alpha Ten Test, and that would be the seed by which the game would be create a uh, random generated world. Well, for now, we're going to go ahead and just use the Navis game map just to control things really well. So we're just going to call this uh, Rongo's Tutorial. Now under your standard options you've got difficulty settings and these rank from scavenger to insane and these control how much damage the zombie does to you and how much damage you do to the zombie. Um, at Nomad is 100-100, so the dummy, you do 100% damage, da and zombies do 100% damage. At Adventurer, the do zombies, I believe, do 75% damage, and you do 125. Scavenger, again, decreases, uh, and kind of the opposite this way. So at Insane Mode, you do 25% damage, and the zombies do 150% damage. So if you want a really tough game, you want to go Insane. If you want to go really easy, you want to go Scavenger. Um, and if you are just starting the game and you have not played before, I highly recommend that you do select Scavenger for your first few games. You want to get a handle on crafting, really understand the mechanics of the game uh, before you start worrying about the zombies themselves. 
for this tutorial series, we are going to set it on Nomad, which is your uh, very basic um, setting for, you know, people who have played first person shooter type games before, uh, but have not had experience with the game itself. So percentage of night, um, this basically says how much of the, of the, of the day night cycle will be night. Uh, default is 35%. You can have less night or more night. Night is a scary time. The zombies will be running faster and they'll be more aggressive towards you. So again, if you are starting off from scratch, you might want to go with a lower percentage of night just so you don't have to suffer through quite as much night time. Uh, we'll leave it at 35% for now. And zombies run default, never run, always run. So basically uh, the default is zombies will run during the nighttime. And during the daytime, they are the slow, shambling beasts of normal Walking Dead type zombies. Uh, keep in mind that dogs will always run. <clears throat> so even uh, even if you have to set to never run, dogs will run. Sorry about that. My voice is <coughs> getting a little froggy on me. All right, we're back. So we're going to have it set on default for now. Uh, if you do want to set, have a really good challenge, set it on always run, and the zombies will run all the time, even during day, which is really scary. <coughs> Enemy aggression. You have two choices, normal and feral. Uh, normal is the basic normal normal zombies. They um, don't know where you are. That You can lose track of them really easily. Um, feral is they know where you are. They are coming for you. They will kill you. <laughs> so at night, you cannot hide from them. Um, they will always attack your base. So if you want a good, uh, you know, it, feral is good if you want to have a really good challenge. Uh, again, if you're starting off, I would say normal. And we're going to leave it on normal for our tutorials. This use persistent profiles. Whenever you start the game, you create a character for yourself, a profile for yourself. You basically do that. <clears throat> random character generation tool and you create a character um, and then if you have used pers persistent profiles off that each time you, you make a change to your character it'll be reflected in game so you generally want to use leave this off the modded options are when you really want to start customizing your game the 24-hour cycle is defaults to 20 to 40 minutes so basically every 40 minutes is a new day and based upon your day night cycle percentage is how much of that cycle is in night so basically you know at 50 percent night it would be a 20 minute day 20 minute night block durability and oh you can adjust this from 10 to 240 minutes so you can have really fast days or really long days if you're going to just do a lot of learning the game and just really exploring you want to just be creative i would strongly recommend going to really long 240 minute uh, days Block durability is how much damage uh, you and the zombies do to any block placed in the world. Um, the uh, lower the durability, the easier it is to knock them out, and the str uh, stronger, the higher that it is, the stronger the blocks are. So this this affects both the zombies attacking your bases that you build or buildings that exist in the game, and it also affects things like chopping down trees and digging a mine underground. So if you want to have really easy mining, you want low there, but keep in mind the zombies will also come right through your walls. So let's leave it at, 50, at 100%. So loot abundance is how, a, what the percentage and the amount of loot you'll get from every object in the game, from um, killing a deer and getting how much meat you get off of it to what, what are the chances of finding a sniper rifle in a safe. The, this percentage controls that. So if you want really low loot, everything really stingy, then you want it to be 25%. If you want a lot of loot, you want to sit on 200%. So again, if you are starting a new game and you've not played before, you may want to set it on high loot just until you get used to it, and then you can slowly start cranking it down and make it really tough on yourself. The loot respawn time is how many days it takes between when you first loot a container until that container resets so that you can loot it again. So you can have it never respawn or every from three to 30 days. The default is 30 days, um, which makes it a little more realistic that, you know, all of a sudden some magic uh, loot fray doesn't come by and just give more stuff to you. 
Drop on death. Uh, right now it's set to everything. We're going to go ahead and change this to backpack only. So basically when you die, uh, you can either have it drop everything you've got on your character on the ground. You can always go back and pick it up and there'll be a little icon on your compass showing you where to go to find that bag. Um, and we'll show you that in a future tutorial. Um, or you can have it drop just your tool belt, which is eight items that are on your tool belt. Or just your backpack itself, which is everything in your backpack. You'll keep your tool belt. Or you can have it delete all. And this is the hardcore mode. So basically everything you've got on you will be gone if you die. Um, so if you want to play really hardcore, you can say delete all. Enemy memory is how long the zombies will remember having seen you. So this ranges from 30 seconds to 90 seconds. So basically if the zombies after you, you run around a corner, 30 seconds later, it would forget you're there and kind of wander off. So again, if you are starting a new game and you haven't played this before, I would recommend having a low uh, enemy memory. We'll have it set to 60 seconds for our game. Zombies, uh, enemy spying. You want to have this set uh, based on how much, uh, how many zombies you want in your world. Um, I generally play all my games on very high spawn, which is 150% of normal zombies. Um, I recommend if you are starting a new game and you are you know, new to the game, I would say with you know, medium to very low, uh, anywhere in there would be good. We're going to do this tutorial set series on medium. Craft timer. By default, it's on normal. So every object in the game has a certain amount of time that's set in the recipe for how long it takes to create that thing. Uh, for example, I think it takes like uh, five seconds to craft a uh, wooden frame. Um, if you want it to be faster, you can hit fast and basically it halves the time needed to craft those objects. Or you can set to none to show, um, uh, to have no time to craft items. We're gonna set it to normal for this tutorial series. The loot timer is how fast it takes to loot an object, whether it be a safe or a zombie itself. You can have it set to none, normal, or fast. So we're going to set this to normal as well. Airdrops. So uh, in your survival world, you will get an airdrop once every one. Let's scroll down here. The little finicky this menu is a little finicky at the bottom here. Oh, it's gonna be really finicky with this. There we go. Got to really finagle it to get anything other than one day. So you can have it disabled so you get no airdrops. You can get one day, three day, or seven day. Now the airdrops uh, are kind of constantly being tweaked and rebalanced. So some t in some alphas, they are great. In some alphas, they suck. Uh, currently, as alpha 10.4, they are pretty good. You will get uh, weapons. Um, you will get uh, antibiotics, health kits, and uh, rare, ma uh, rare, rare, ma rare books, rare uh, items. Um, there have been times in the past where you would get construction materials or you would get food. Um, so again, it really does change based upon what alpha is at and where they are balancing those things. So generally, if I leave it on one day, so you get a supply drop every day and it comes at noon. And then cheat mode on or off. This basically enables the creative menu. So if you are new to the game and you want to really just learn about the building, you can turn cheat mode on and that would allow you to hit the um, default is the U key on your keyboard, which will bring up the creative menu and that will give you access to all the blocks that are part of the game. It doesn't teach you how to craft them, it just teaches you how to use them. So if you want to learn how to actually craft, I would leave this off. All right, so this is basically a good tutorial on all the basics of a survival game. And I'm going to be doing a, a series of these tutorials, just very basics. And uh, together we will uh, explore the just the basics of the world, you know, everything from your, what you do in the first five seconds of the game, um, and on from there. So I hope you liked it. If you did, uh, leave me a comment. If you want me to cover a very specific uh, part of the game, a tutorial on that, please let me know and we'll, uh, we'll do that for you. For now, it's been Wrong with the Bold. If you liked it, click that like button, comment, subscribe, tell your friends, your family, and your grandmother, and I will see you in our tutorial series.